Professor Clements with you again as uh, we continue going through material on electric circuits. This uh, coincides with Chapter 21 of the OpenStax College Physics Textbook. And uh, let's go ahead and launch into it. We're really going into an extension of work we've already done with resistors. And that will uh, you know, get us to a little bit more complicated circuits. We're not going to study in detail the circuits that make up a computer, but uh, we will get a little bit more complicated. So with the capacitor, we had uh, uh, the material that uh, talked about series capacitance and parallel capacitance. Uh, similar arrangements can be made with resistors. If the resistors are connected to end to end, and we have the same current running through each element of the circuit, so the same current going through, then we have a series connection. And if you think of an electron trying to work its way through the resistors, there are more of the resistors here than just a single resistor. The series resistance is higher than a single resistor. And this formula here is just general. I stopped at three. But if you did have a fourth resistor, what do you think you would, how would you modify this calculation? And you should have said plus R sub four. The parallel arrangement, what is true, what is common for all these resistors is they have the same potential difference from uh, one side of the resistor to another side of the resistor. Potential difference is the same for all four resistors. And in that situation, the current will be different if we have different values of resistance. The electrons, most of them, will travel through the resistor that has the smallest value, the least path of resistance. As a calculation, we do an inverse uh, type calculation. So we have 1 over resistance parallel. The net parallel resistance would be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, plus 1 over R3, plus 1 over R4. Then we have series arrangement. We just simply add the values. The resistance is getting higher. For parallel, we use the reciprocal calculation. And again, as we had for the capacitors, this uh, net resistance is going to be smaller than the smallest value that uh, we have. I don't know if I can smell, spell small with this mouse pointer. So, But the parallel resistance will be small. Okay, there we go. Close enough. So let's try uh, advancing our slide here again. So how are these three resistors connected? R1, R2, R3. You should have said series. We have the same current going through each resistor. And we would add up those three values, find R sub S. Then, only then, would we calculate the current using V equals IR. So when we have series and parallel arrangements of resistors, we simplify the circuit as much as possible. And uh, in some situations, we'll get a uh, reduction down to just one resistance. Then we use V equals IR. We can calculate the current. And then we could calculate the potential drop across each resistor, again, with V equals IR. We know the I coming out of the battery. That's the same I in all three resistors. V equals IR will give us the potential difference across any one uh, resistance. Um, so here's parallel arrangement of resistors. This is household wiring, and there are lots of parallel uh, connections in household wiring. Um, a circuit breaker down in the basement would come up and maybe run all of the wall outlets and the light in the living room. Another circuit would run all of the wall outlets and, uh, and lights in a bathroom. Um, so that's uh, what we have. All right, a little bit more complicated circuit. How would we start analyzing this? Well, the resistors uh, over to the left are not in a simple series or simple parallel arrangement. We have to do some other work first. And they've circled how you should do the work here. These three resistors are in parallel. 
these two resistors have a separate parallel arrangement. So they've calculated an equivalent resistance here, an equivalent resistance here. Now, do you see a simple series connection or a simple parallel connection of resistors? And where they've circled it for you, that's simplified down to one series resistor. Now these two are in parallel. And lastly, we add them up, we get a single um, resistance, equivalent resistance. And then we could calculate the current in the battery. We step back one picture, we can calculate the potential difference across each separate resistance here using V equals IR. We come back to this place, we know the potential difference across this uh, equivalent parallel resistor. So we could calculate the current in each branch here, and we could add those two currents up and check our work that should equal the current we had in this circuit. Um, then we can back up one more picture uh, using the uh, uh, current we now have in this branch. We can calculate potential difference across each of these and so forth and so on. We can step backward picture by picture and work out either current or voltage, whatever is needed. So here's an example. We have a uh, 1 ohm resistor, a 6 and a 13. Which current is going to be the largest, I2 or I3? And you should say the I2. It's the smaller, going through the smallest resistance, so it's going to have the largest current. <clears throat> and you would combine these, get a single resistance here, add it with this one, calculate the current coming out of the battery, do the potential drops, and then you could calculate the individual currents, uh, I1 and I2, or sorry, I2 and I3. Um, in a house, sometimes you may notice in the kitchen that the light dims when the refrigerator kicks on. The reason for that is that the refrigerator motor draws a large current when the motor first starts. When the motor's up and running, it does not need as much current. But to get started, it draws a lot large current. And consequently, it's going to uh, draw uh, significant current back down from the fuse box, breaker box. And consequently, the I being larger here, will get some voltage drop here. So if we have 120 volts, effective voltage here, um, it's going to drop us down more than usual. And the light bulb responds to that as well. The light bulb is being fed by this uh, voltage, and it'll dim down. More on that later. Um, batteries, uh, solar power, hydroelectric power, wind power. Um, battery technology is under development, an important uh, field, as we seek to store power for use at off-peak uh, times. So here's a battery, and a battery is modeled not just with the voltage, but also batteries have an internal resistance. We'll use small r for the internal resistance. Um, so this diagram is slightly misleading. We, they didn't need wires from uh, the, uh, the battery to down there. This is the battery. And inside the battery, there's a certain voltage. Um, with this E here, we'll use a script E in class. Uh, the EMF of the battery, that's old, old terminology. EMF uh, would be the script E, electromotive force. It's a voltage, it's not a force. But uh, that voltage um, does, in some sense, uh, gives the electrons a stronger or weaker push, depending if the voltage is high or low. Uh, our internal resistance, that's crucial, because our battery is going to have a terminal voltage. In class, I'll put a sub T on uh, this symbol. It's going to have a terminal voltage equal to the, I, to the EMF minus the current in the battery times the resistance of the battery. This little calculation here gives you the potential difference across the internal resistance. And that's going to be a drop in potential. Um, so if our, we have 9 volts here, if this turns out to be 0.2 volts, then we have 8.8 .8 volts for the terminal voltage. 
So that's an important fact is bat when batteries are new, R is small. When batteries are old, this little R is large. Batteries themselves are taking chemical energy and producing electrical energy, uh, causing electrons to pile up at one of the electrons, little electrodes. We're not going to discuss that. I uh, won't worry about it. So here's our EMF, here's our resistor. Current is coming out, uh, the conventional current, and driving the load, a motor or a light bulb. Do you think this uh, calculation is correct for the current? The EMF divided by the sum of our load plus internal resistance. And the answer is yes. These two are in series with each other, our load and the, uh, the small internal resistance. So that's fine. Uh, we can test batteries. When batteries are tested, they are taken under a load. We want to have a small R load here, so we get significant current coming out. And that will tell us if there's a big voltage drop here, um, that the battery is old, if R is large. Uh, so battery testers put uh, the battery under a load. To recharge a battery, we have a plus terminal here, negative terminal here, and uh, use caution in doing this. Uh, read your owner's manual before attempting this. Uh, but you can recharge batteries and reverse the chemical reaction inside the battery. We stack two batteries together and we end up with a larger voltage, a larger terminal voltage. These two voltages add together. Uh, one chemical reaction pumps up the uh, charge to a certain potential. The second battery pumps up the charge to an even higher potential. And batteries technically are multi-cell uh, devices. We, we call a 1.5 uh, battery a battery, but uh, really it does take two or three or four cells in series to make up a battery. Um, so we would calculate the current here with the sum of the two uh, EMFs and the sum of all the resistors. They're in series. They don't have to be right next to each other to be in series. R1 is in series with, with R2 and the load. If we put batteries in parallel with each other, uh, you should have the same EMF, you know, a 9 volt and a 9 volt, or 1.5 and 1.5, so the batteries don't work against each other. In this situation, each battery only has to supply half of the power, so the batteries will last longer. Uh, you know, 1.5 volt here and 1.5 volt here. We don't gain any terminal voltage, it's not higher, but we have the capability for producing more current or producing a set amount of current for a longer uh, period of time. And we'll talk about this on a future, future video. So we've introduced the concept of more complicated circuits with series and parallel, and we've introduced the concept of the battery. And again, if uh, this internal resistance is small, the battery is new, it'll be able to have a good terminal voltage and, and drive a good significant current to the load. If the battery is old, this internal resistance gets larger and we won't be able to drive as much uh, current into the load. So that's the highlights of our first two uh, sections here. Um, if you're using my reading guides for this, you should answer the other questions I did not comment on on the reading guide.